noted public intellectual, scholar, and former Harvard professor Cornel West is, of course, running for president as an independent. And just now, he announced who his running mate is going to be on the Tavis Smiley show. It will be Melina Abdullah. Now, Melina Abdullah is a co-founder of Black Lives Matter chapter in Los Angeles and a tenured professor at California State University, LA. She doesn't, however, have any political experience. Here's what he had to say about her. I am very blessed. It is my great joy to announce my dear sister. She was a great, one of the great freedom fighters of her generation, one of the great love warriors of her generation. She's a doctor. She's a professor. Most importantly, she's a lover of the people. Her name is Malina Abdullah. And in other VP news, are Democrats afraid of Nicole Shanahan, RFK Jr.'s VP pick? Democratic Representative Ro Khanna reportedly pleaded with Shanahan to exit the ticket, according to CBS News. Now, CBS reached out to Shanahan for comment on a letter penned by Khanna in which he asked her to step down as RFK Jr.'s number two because she would be helping Trump win. That has not gone over well. Shanahan responded by posting the correspondence with, CB, uh, with CBS on X, to which she issued a lengthy response. Not only did she decline Kana's request, she explained that he initially was congratulatory of her, but is now circulating a petition from moveon.org to encourage her not to run. Now on X, she wrote, quote, clearly Roe has changed his stance based on pressure from the party. I hope he understands how anti-democratic it is to ask someone to step down from a race that empowers the American public to make their own decisions. All right, first up, I think it's interesting to hear who uh, uh, Cornel West has announced as his VP. I do wonder, as I do with every VP selection, what is the thinking about how this will enrich the ticket? I was actually on Tavis Smiley show on Monday having the discussion with him about who I think it might be and what kind of considerations uh, Cornel West might be making. And I think a similar sort of critique can be made here as was made in the RFK Jr. case, which is what do they bring to the, bring to the ticket substantively? Uh, the logic often is, well, if the head of the ticket doesn't have as much political experience, maybe you get a backup person who does. And the VP, that's kind of the Trump, Mike Pence logic. Mike Pence, the idea was also he shores up the evangelical vote, given that Donald Trump is someone who used to identify as a Democrat who supported abortion, blah, blah, blah. And so if you're thinking about all of the reasons why VPs are picked, do they represent a state that you're going to struggle with in the general, all of these kinds of things? You know, it's not immediately clear to me what the thinking was um, with uh, Medina Abdullah, although she certainly does seem to have a lot of ideological alignment yeah, um, with Cornel West. And is this just an expression like of core <laughs> principle over some of these other political factors? Yeah, I, I think you pretty much said it. This appears, I, I'm not familiar with this individual whatsoever, um, looks to me like someone who has similar um, deeply progressive or, or left um, commitments just like Cornel West and is doubling down on that. Um, so there it is. Yeah. All right. Moving on to this kind of weird Twitter debate scandals. Yeah. I did not have on my bingo card Ro Khanna becoming involved in the discourse over Nicole Shanahan, but uh, I, I am seeing this move on petition to Nicole Shanahan step down from Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Spoiler presidential ticket created by Congressman Ro Khanna, where he, he writes, and, and he and he's addressed this on 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 the news channels. So he he's, was on Abby this Martin, is not like Abby Phillips last night. this is not like done in his name or without his knowledge or something. Yeah, but let's let's um, let's unpack how we got here because I think the scandal here is in how it unfolded more so than in the idea that a Democrat doesn't want uh, RFK Jr. to be a spoiler. I mean, that's not exactly news here. They've all been saying that out loud the whole time. They don't want RFK Jr. I think to it's run. It's kind of weird to start a petition to get her to leave the ticket. Oh, okay. I mean, Wait. Oh. Remissa, oh, go ahead. Okay. Oh, I was just going to unpack okay, it because sure. the exciting part is how this unfolded on Twitter. So what happened was he was planning to go to CBS, have the story, talk about this petition. CBS reached out to Shanahan asking for her comment, which flagged for her that this was about to happen. So Shanahan takes to Twitter and says... I, I've received a letter that this is going to happen. And she implies very heavily, I'll read it directly, she implies that Ro Khanna has flip-flopped, privately encouraging her to run and publicly wanting to condemn her run or get, to get her to drop out so that RFK Jr. isn't a spoiler. And she wrote on Twitter, in my conversation with Ro, he congratulated me on the position and encouraged me to run, stating that every American has the right to run in this country. He stated that we live in a democracy and it was wrong for anyone to threaten me against running. Now, if he really did say all that, it would seem pretty odd for him to then start a petition to 
get her off the ticket. So Rokana then releases his text to Shanahan, doesn't release her side of the conversation, which I think is pretty decent of a person to do, but does release his text to clarify what he actually said to her. Here's what he said to her. Hopefully we can throw this up on the screen so you can read along. He said, Nicole, thanks for the call and congrats on your selection. I want to be very respectful because I believe everyone has the right to run, but I would hope you might consider joining the Biden efforts at some point uh, to do and push for bold things in regenerative agriculture and climate. Let us keep the lines of communication and dialogue open warmly, Row. Now, saying that I want to be sensitive because everyone, of course, has the right to run and congrats on your selection is a little different from how Shanahan represented it online, the idea that he was encouraging her to run. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Fine. I, I still find it very weird for a member of Congress to create a petition asking someone from another political campaign to not run. I, I, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's just me. I find that well, that aspect yeah. of it very weird. And it's explicitly framed around the idea that, I mean, you know, he, he can say all the nice things he wants about third parties and the importance of third parties, but he's he, here he's doing the classic, um, you know, you should have the worst of two options kind of thinking. Well, I think and, the reason why he feels comfortable doing it is because you see in the text to her, he's specifically zeroing in on regenerative agriculture and climate. These issues that he knows are important to her, which are essentially important to um, environmentalist RFK Jr. as well, but which he thinks are going to be dramatically undermined by another Trump presidency. And so I think some of the comfort reaching out to her seems to be that these are people who were two Democrats running in Democratic circles in California who seem to have had some prior relationship here. And Rokana seems to be reaching out to, you know, fellow Democrat, form, former Democratic donor, former Biden 2020 right. donor, and saying, hey, would you consider helping the Democrats just like you have in the past? Yeah, I, I don't have any problem with that. I, I, that's fine. The, the public petition is weird to me. It's just weird. It just strikes a, a bad note. And look, we've interviewed Ro Khanna on the show many times. He's actually, like of all the people in Congress, by far one of the more, if not the most responsive to this show. You've interviewed him a lot on your own uh, 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 podcast. So I, I, I appreciate, again, he's not someone I, he's not someone of my own ideological leanings, but I, I, I don't go out of my way to criticize him. I think he's a thoughtful and interesting person and has done some good work on civil liberties and other things. So I'm not like, grr, I need to hold Rokana's feet to the fire or something. Um, I, again, I appreciate him being interviewed repeat, repeatedly on the show and he has every right to not want her to run. I just find the petition weird. So the I think what this is kind of exposing is how frankly close Shanahan is to the Democratic Party and how kind of new this pivot is. It's not so surprising. RFK Jr., of course, was running as a Democrat just a few months ago. But I do think it complicates people's uh, reframing of RFK Jr. as a um, independent candidate who is increasingly right coded over certain issues well, that he has chosen to talk about. What it, what happens now when you have a kind of little media fracas where your VP pick is again associated so closely to Democratic actors? And with respect to Rokana's actual ask here, I obviously this isn't about me. I don't think it's that interesting to talk about what my feelings are, but I, I don't think it's that you know I don't agree with his idea that he should recruit her to help Biden's interests. Those that's not my feeling in the least. Um, but I do think it's interesting that the defensiveness in Nicole Shanahan and her response to this does seem to be perhaps in part about how he's exposed the relationship between the two of them as like people who are two California Democrats. Yes. And what I wonder is, you know, we know that the Biden campaign has an entire uh, uh, facet of it designated to monitoring and seeking to prevent, possibly through legal challenges in the future, um, the third party challenges the independent candidates for whom RFK Jr. has em uh, emerged as the clear threat. I think they were primed to be more concerned about no labels that has entirely fizzled and actually was really never going to be the, the threat they thought it was going to be. RFK Jr. is, is now their public enemy, number one. So what I w wonder, and it would not at all surprise me is the case, did someone in that effort go, oh, you know what? I bet Rokana knows her yeah, uh, and from Democratic sure. circles and asks, would you reach out to her I'm and sure. just politely see if there's any way you could get her not to run? It, so was it, what it really shows, and again, that's, there's nothing illegal about there. That's fine. Everybody can have private conversation about whatever they want. 
it shows the extent to which Biden world is truly panicked yeah. about RFK. I mean, to be honest, I have way more comfort with, th with this than the weaponizing of the legal system to challenge third parties yes, across the country, despicable. which is what the Democratic Party is intended to do. Yes. Remember, we covered this New York Times piece from last month titled, Democrats Prepare Aggressive Counter to Third Party Threats, subtitled, An Army of Lawyers Aims to Challenge the Steadily Advancing Ballot Access Efforts of Independent Candidates, who Democrats fear could pull votes away from swing states. That's the real problem. The problem is the Democratic Party using its enormous financial advantage and legal advantage to try to block from the ballots, literally undermining democracy, the ability of candidates like RFK Jr., Cornell West, Jill Stein, and anybody well, else from getting on the ballot. saying that democracy itself is at stake, and unless you vote for them, democracy, our democracy is over. This little text message is small potatoes yeah. and frankly just a human interest. Um, but I did find there to be a little bit of uh, shadiness in the way that it was represented by Shanahan online, mm. a person about whom I'm neutral, except for that, again, I have these concerns about why, what it means for RFK Jr. as a candidate to select a VP seemingly purely on the basis that they are backing them financially. Uh, before we go, I should note, I again saw a round of, is he courting, will he join the Libertarian Party? stories in the last 24 hours. I, I thought those had basically been put to, those rumors put to bed, but I'm seeing another round of speculation on that, so make of that what you will. Mm -hmm. I don't have any new information or insights, but continuing to monitor whether that will be the case. I, I think given the VP pick. He doesn't need them. <laughs> very, well, and, also, and they, they would not yeah. want him given the VP pick. Yeah. I knew there was already gonna be a difficulty of a meeting of the minds there if it could work out, but and the, and the ballot access needs are just not as great when you have a multimillionaire billionaire funding, funding your efforts. More rising right after this.